For those who didn't know, the IP for Remedy's SCP-inspired third-person shooter, Control, has been owned by 505 Games. This includes the first game, Control 2, codenamed Condor, and any future games that could come out. This week, however, Remedy was able to buy the IP from 505 Studios in a full rights purchase, which means that the IP is now back in the hands of Remedy, and they can start making games for it again. However, until the end of December 2024, 505 will remain the publisher of the game. Welcome to Necro News, the show where we cover the hottest gaming news from the last week. This week we'll be covering the unfair removal of a popular game from Steam, the surprising discovery and leak of Time Slitters 4, Nintendo vs. Yuzu, the ramifications of the Sony mask layoffs, and much more. Let's speak as a doozy. That's putting it mildly. Anyway, subscribe and turn on notifications to keep up to date with all the hottest gaming news. Time Splitters, while now considered a niche title, was once a cultural juggernaut back in its prime. It's also got an advanced form of the Valve curse, as the series has been unable to release a fourth game, not once, but twice. Ah, damn it! Space Man. We're not going to worry about the second attempt, as it's the first attempt that is making the rounds this week. On the PS3 subreddit, Redditor FlimsyZebra3775 found a listing on eBay for a PS3 dev console and noticed that one of the images had the phrase Time Splitters 4. When Flimsy Zebra asked the seller for more images regarding Time Splitters 4, he was treated to a few pictures of the game booting up and working. So we might have an in dev version of the last title finally in our grasp. In the thread, Zebra stated that he purchased the console and will be dumping the files into the video game archive project. We'll keep you posted if this develops into anything else, but otherwise we'll have to keep looking forward to it. Way forward, in fact. Ha! <laughs> uh, anyway, because this week, we saw the reveal of a data leak from the company Way Forward. According to Twitter user Lance McDonald, a discarded hard drive contained the source code and prototype from the company spanning from between the years of 2009 to 2013. And the images attached to the post, the following games, among other items, were leaked to the website hiddenpalace.org. DuckTales Remastered, Looney Tunes Duck Amuck, Shantae Risky's Revenge, a Strike game, a Barbie game, an Adventure Time game, and a Star Wars game called Ask the Oda. <gasps> anyway, there was some concern, as the Shantae Game Boy Advance game would be technically within the span of time. However, according to Lance, the person in possession of the data has said that they won't be touching anything to do with the unreleased Game Boy Advance Shantae game, which is still in active development. So, that's cool, I guess. I like Shantae. I really like Shantae. Bellatra is an interesting game that's recently taken the roguelike scene by storm. It's a unique twist on the card-based roguelike system found in games like Slay the Spire or Monster Train. Instead of being a typical RPG card game, it's a roguelike poker game. So essentially it's poker but with extra steps. The game itself is pretty funny and fun. Based around pulling a solid poker hand, buffing it with tarot cards, jokers, planet cards, Coupons, blueprints, spectral power cards, booster packs, and honestly, it's kind of hard to explain without actually playing it. Which will be difficult, at least if you don't use Steam to buy games, as the game's age rating was changed overnight from 3 plus to 18 plus for containing prominent gambling imagery and material that instructs about gambling. And as such, it's been taken down by many digital stores. Hey, hi, quick interjection. Uh, I was a bit into gambling back in the day. Uh, for instance, I once gambled my entire rent on a horse bet. Uh, anyway, what I'm saying is that there isn't a gambling game in existence whose instructions require the use of tarot cards, planet cards, and shiny jokers. Uh, that, that's all. Now back, back to the video. As you can imagine, the developers of the game, Playstack, are pretty pissed off. For starters, in the statement they released, they explained that the person who developed Bellatro is fundamentally anti-gambling. Secondly, Playstack mentioned that when they spoke with the ratings board back in October, they specifically addressed this topic and they were still given the 3 plus rating. Playstack did say that they will be working hard to get the game back on various digital platforms, but like we said, if the game looks fun to you, you can still get it on Steam. Remember when we said Sony might be working on a handheld? And along with that, Sony expects the PS5 to drop in sales. Well, despite that, Sony reported a record quarter in sales and revenue. And despite that, they still decided to lay off a whopping 8% of their workforce, which amounts to about 900 people. There isn't a clear reason for these layoffs, as the only indication Jim Ryan, the CEO of Sony said, was that the industry has changed immensely and we need to future ready ourselves to set the business up for what lies ahead. 
We need to deliver on expectations from developers and gamers and continue to propel future technology in gaming. The layoffs mean the complete shutdown of their London studio, along with Fire Sprite Studio, who are involved with Star Citizen, mind you, downsizing. Their Twisted Metal live service game was also cancelled, and while the details are unclear, they may have also affected Naughty Dog. Possibly related to the layoffs, though it's not been officially stated so this is just conjecture on our part, is the closure of Sony's VTuber agency, Prism Project. VTubers for anyone who isn't initiated, though if you're watching us I'd hope you have some awareness, are content creators who use motion capture programs to animate their own avatars like us. Prism Project, though, has had a whopping 18 VTuber talents, which is a lot for an agency only, like, what, three years old? Yeah. It's not all bad news, though, as Sony did give the rights to the IPs to the talents themselves, meaning they'll be able to continue their work as indie content creators, which is pretty unusual for a Japanese VTuber agency. Though it does go hand in hand with the support and severance benefits that Sony promised to their affected employees, which is a rare win for Sony. Huh. I mean, that's not that much of a win since people are still losing their jobs. Speaking of the Sony layoffs though, EA CEO Andrew Wilson also put out a statement outlining their company's restructuring resulting in 670 employees being laid off. F***ing EA. Additionally, part of their restructuring strategy is the decision to sunset games and move away from licensed IPs, something that EA has been famous for doing for a while. Specifically, they stated, we are also sunsetting games and moving away from development of future licensed IPs that we do not believe will be successful in our changing industry. So I'm sorry to say gamers, we won't be getting EA's Kung Fu Panda 4. Only Star Wars games from here on out. It's just not fair, damn it! <laughs> Actually, you'd be wrong. In a note to all EA employees, Laura Mealy explained that the sudden shift in company thinking has led to the rumored Star Wars The Mandalorian first-person shooter developed by Respawn Entertainment to be cancelled. Mealy also stated that EA will be winding down Richline Games, whose single-player Battlefield game will now be handled by Criterion. Apparently though, the two Marvel games, Black Panther and Iron Man, are still in development, but given the absolutely abysmal state of Suicide Squad, who knows if that'll stay in place. Does this mean that EA is dead? Unfortunately, no. In fact, my assumption is that they will be moving towards doing more sports games and more in-game transaction games. My apologies for those who play The Sims 4. It's okay, because now they have this game to look forward to. Well, I'm the Joker, baby! <laughs> this is probably our most requested story this week. Tropic Haze, the developers of the Nintendo Switch emulator Yuzu, is being sued by Nintendo. Nintendo alleges that because of Yuzu, over a million copies of The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom were downloaded a week and a half before the official release. Nintendo filed the lawsuit on February 26 in the US District Courts, stating that Tropic Haze is liable for unlawful distribution of the pirated copies. They justified the claim by stating that Yuzu provides any internet user in the world with the means to unlawfully decrypt and play any Nintendo Switch game. The suit even clarifies against any arguments for game archiving by stating there is no lawful way to use Yuzu to play Nintendo Switch games because it must decrypt the game's encryption. Including that because of the Yuzu Patreon page, developers of the emulator were able to earn 30000 a month by supplying subscribers with daily updates and early access to games by preventing anti-piracy measures Nintendo had set in place. Nintendo is seeking a hiking app! Lol, never mind, we were gonna go into how Tropic Haze could probably win due to the precedent that Sony set in the 2000s, but nope! Yuzu just bowed out like a little bitch with a $2.4 million settlement. So yeah, that happened literally hours before this video was released. Twitter user Oatmeal Dome posted a settlement to the lawsuit with $2.4 million. What's more, Yuzu, as it currently is, will cease to exist. It is no more. It has ceased to be. They also can't distribute any of Yuzu's source code or builds and development on the emulator must completely stop. Whatever, f***ing video games, f***ing done with this shit. And here are the games coming out this week. And you bet your butt we're streaming Unicorn Overlord. And here's our stream schedule for the week. We'll be doing a few different things. We'll be doing a dance rush stream over on Twitch. That'll be fun. And we'll be continuing World's End Club. And as Ellie said, playing Unicorn Overlord. And that's it for this week's Necro News. If you like what we do here and want to keep up to date, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you've made it this far in the video, put a skull in the comments. It was really fun seeing everyone do it last week. 
We're also trying to raise funds for a new Live TD model for me, so if you want to help out, link to the coffee page is down below. And of course, an extra special thank you to all our channel members. We love you guys so much. That's all we have this week, so until next time, goodbye. Bye.